Hello everyone, my radar tropical weather expert, Dr. David Roglicki here. And today we're gonna to be talking to you about satellite imagery and the uses of that in the tropics. But before we begin, if you are watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button, be sure to hit that bell so you get notifications when we post new videos and be sure to give us a thumbs up. You know that really helps the channel out. So the first thing we're gonna be taking a look at here is geocolor satellite imagery. Now geocolor actually is a blend of multiple different satellite channels. And this allows us to view things we wouldn't be able to see if we just looked at some of these channels individually. Now one of the big things that we look at during hurricane season is a wide view of the tropical Atlantic. And there are a bunch of interesting features here. And the one I wanna highlight is this, this. This is what is known as the Saharan air layer. And what is actually happening here is that there is dust that is coming off the coast of Africa. And what geocolor allows us to do is that it allows us to see this dust coming off. Now, Saharan air layer is very important when it comes to tropical cyclogenesis for hurricanes forming. So right here, if we look at the intertropical convergence zone, which stretches all the way from the coast of Africa and should stretch to the coast of South America, you will see that there's a lot of activity off the coast of Africa, but not so much towards the coast of South America. And part of that has to do with that Saharan dust. Now we can take a zoom in into the Caribbean and talk about these features a little bit more. So again, this is geocolor in the Caribbean, and it gives you a lot of information about flows at low levels, flows at upper levels, but there are a lot of components that go into geocolors. And we'll talk about why geocolor is a little bit more advantageous than some of the channels individually. So if we go to one of the channels that make up ge uh, the geocolor, this is the visible satellite imagery. And you can already start to see some of the issues with the just the visible alone, is that while visible has a higher resolution, which means allows you to see much smaller features, it doesn't work when the sun's up. So what you see here is the Terminator moving across, and when the sun is not up, you can't, uh, you can't use visible at all, because part of the issue is that for visible to work, it is actually seeing light that is reflecting off the clouds and coming back to the satellite. So there are a bunch of ways to mitigate this. The next channel that hurricane forecasters use is shortwave infrared. So what shortwave infrared is designed to do is mainly for low clouds. We use this in mid latitudes for fog detection. But if you look here in this one, you can start to see these clouds moving here from east to west. And you can still get this information even if the sun is not up. But shortwave IR is also limited by the sun. It does, it does give you more information when the sun is up. So we can move to the next one, which is infrared. Now infrared provides us a, a little bit different view because if you'll notice in the southwestern corner here, you're gonna see a lot of different colors here. So what the infrared is actually measuring is cloud top temperature. So these colors here, the reds, the blacks, the whites, this is around minus 70 to minus 80 degrees Celsius cloud tops. And that gives you an idea of how high the clouds are going and how intense that convection is. Now, the last one that we're gonna be taking a look at is water vapor. Now, a lot of the other channels we use because we don't want uh, information that is clouded by water vapor, no pun intended. But what the water vapor satellite imagery does, it allows you to see where the water vapor is moving very high in the atmosphere. For this particular channel, nine, 10, 11 miles up. And you get this very interesting look of this particular, uh, this particular setting here, is that if we start with our convection down here around Panama, you actually see this channel of moisture and winds moving up from southwest to northeast. So that's what water vapor provides you that the other channels don't get. And as a hurricane forecaster or someone who's doing analyses, geocolor is nice, but you need to be able to take advantage of all the information that all these different satellite bands are providing you. Because like I said, this water vapor imagery, geocolor is not gonna pick up on this at all. So this is just things you have to know if you're gonna be analyzing the tropics with different bands of satellite. All right, so those are some of the satellite images that we use to diagnose tropical cyclone activity and behavior. And we'll put links in the description to, so you can actually start doing some of your own analysis. So with that, thank you very much for watching and happy tracking. See you later.
follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.